Okay. So today we're going to learn how to draw a one-point perspective grid. Obviously, this first drawing that I've already made up ahead of time looks uh, really complex. And I'm, what I'm going to do with the overlay is I'm going to build this step by step. You can see the steps here. You can go back and look at this. Um, I'll put it back at the, at the end of the tutorial. I'll put it uh, put this back, and so you can look look at it. Um, and stop and rewind and do the things that you need to do to figure out how to draw this. It's not that complicated though once we get into it step by step. You can also find this um, in the Francis Ching book that I shared with you on iLearn uh, Design Drawing uh, on page 256 and 257. Um, <clears throat> but you should also read the entire section on perspectives this week, uh, 224 to 283. Now in <clears throat> that section on perspectives, you're gonna see that there are uh, a lot of different methods to draw perspectives. Um, I've been here uh, AUS now for seven years and I've never seen anybody draw it this way uh, but after talking with Professor Hughes this is the way that we learned how to do it. Um, it's the, really the only way I know. Um, I had to refresh myself on it um, but in other classes other sections are going to do it differently. Um, I like this way uh, because it allows me um, to really get inside of a perspective. I'm not always trying to struggle with how to get next to a thing or close to a thing like you do with some of the other methods. Some of the other methods seem to me um, to be more about viewing an object in space uh, from beyond or above uh, or away from. Um, and in architecture, we like to be embedded within the space so we can understand what it feels like. And that's why I like uh, this grid method, okay? So we're gonna start as we always should. Okay, with the horizon line. Now I'm gonna place my horizon line a little bit further up on the page. I'm not gonna draw it necessarily right in the middle. Um, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna set this grid up for the next tutorial for our one point perspective of a building that we are going to share with you. I think Professor Hughes has already done that through the exonometric exercise. I will share with my students um, on Google Drive so you have access to those dimensions. Um, I have also um, kind of simplified the dimensions for the sake of the tutorials uh, and I'm going to ask you to use the actual dimensions that you find in the files that I share with you. Um, if you have any questions about that I'll clarify it in an email <coughs> later. All right. Um, knowing that uh, I'm going to draw this uh, perspective in a particular way and I'm going to be in a, in a particular space viewing particular things, I'm going to start to set up my grid so that it allow me to see things the way that I want to. So uh, for me, I've pushed my horizon line up to about two-thirds, maybe a little bit less uh, of the page so that most of um, the page is below the horizon line so that I can see things in the foreground um, in, in this building, uh, this space that I'm going to be inside, okay? So one is to establish your horizon line, okay? <clears throat> and just uh, where it needs to be in order to see the things that you want to. Now you should probably ex uh, experiment and play around where that thing is on the page and so you can see what it actually does to the drawing and how you view things, okay? The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to establish our scale uh, and we're going to establish our horizontal measuring lines and our vertical measuring lines, okay? So HML stands for horizontal measuring line and VML stands for vertical measuring line, okay? Again, going back to the previous tutorial, I'm going to think about my eye line being at about two meters. Now I just used a scale that you, uh, as you should do, uh, one to 50, okay? And you can see what I do is I just establish a set of measuring lines, okay? And I just scaled these from that scale to six meters, which corresponds to some of the measurements that I will have in the files that I share with you. One, two. So now I know that my ground line, okay? My ground line now is established as a horizontal measuring line about two meters below the horizon. So that means in this space, what I see is gonna be from my eye level, okay? And I know that I'm gonna go up about six meters to the ceiling that's above me, although 
Uh, in a future tutorial, I'm gonna talk about how there is a sort of undulating ceiling, uh, different levels of that, and so we're gonna have to go up a bit higher. We'll get into that in the future tutorial, but for right now, just to understand how to lay this grid out, that's the most important thing. Knowing uh, that this is also going to be an enclosed space, um, I don't have to necessarily draw all four sides of this sort of measuring line box, but I'm going to do it because I'm going to need it, okay? Okay, so that's the vertical and the horizontal measuring lines, but I'm also going to complete this box because I'm going to need it to draw uh, the ceiling plane and both wall planes that I have. And so I don't necessarily have to, <clears throat> excuse me, draw out all the numbers for the measurements as long as I know where they are, as long as they correspond in, in scale to where they need to be. All right. The next thing I want to do is establish my center of view. If you remember that from the last time, my center of view will also be my vanishing point for all intents and purposes. And I'm going to put that right there. Now you can see what I did is I offset that. If you look at the design drawing page 256, 257, uh, Ching actually makes this um, step second. Um, it doesn't really matter which order you do it in. I, I kind of like to establish the measuring uh, grid first, and then uh, I think about where I want to be in the space viewing through that grid. I offset mine for a reason. You can kind of see the grid behind. allows me to see over into that area a little bit more. There's reasons for that, which we'll get into later. There's an architectural element here that I really want to see at a particular angle. Um, and, so, and it also just makes the drawing a bit more dynamic than making it, obviously, right on the center, okay? So you just establish your center of view, which is also your vanishing point. All the lines will vanish towards that point um, on the horizon. <clears throat> All right, next thing that we're gonna do is establish our vanishing grid lines. Okay, and it is this kind of ground level set of lines which you can see in the grid. And what they do is they vanish through these measured points in our grid, which we've established at a certain point, um, two meters below the horizon. It's got a certain width. That width is the width of my space. Uh, and now I just draw lines that diminish towards the horizon in perspective through those points, which at this point are basically every meter from one to six, okay? So in the future tutorial, you're gonna see that the building that we give you is six meters wide, roughly. Although, like I said, I adjusted some of these dimensions just to make this tutorial a bit easier, okay? Uh, the next thing I wanna do is establish my horizontal grid lines for the walls. Okay, and you can see that what happens <coughs> is we don't really have uh, a way to, to establish distance and how things actually diminish as they move uh, towards the horizon in space. And so we need to have some kind of um, device that allows us to do that. And so we do that in conjunction with, okay, this diagonal point. The diagonal point is actually the measure of the width of the space, which here is six meters at one to 50, right? Away from, uh, or either equal to or greater than the distance from the center of view, right? To the left or the right, doesn't matter. But you can see here, that's six meters, and I just moved that up here and I made that point also right at six meters, okay? What that allows me to do then is to draw diagonal lines through this measuring box that will set up an opportunity for me to have intersections tell me how these grids, uh, this grid of uh, meters actually diminishes as it moves towards the horizon. Okay, it's just a way to measure um, that grid. Okay, so you can see what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do it at the top and I'm gonna do it at the bottom. I'm gonna draw a diagonal line through the extent points, the limit points, both top and bottom, okay? And 
and I'm doing this pretty poorly and quickly. Obviously, you'll do this very precisely and accurately, okay? And I'll show you the clean drawing underneath, but you can see what that does now is that it crosses my vanishing grid lines, okay, uh, at, a particular, at particular points, and those points are going to be important um, because they establish uh, every meter, okay, now, right? So drawing through that, drawing through that, I'm going to draw through that, and I'm going to draw this parallel to the horizon line, and you can see they get uh, sort of bigger as they move closer to me, or, or smaller as they move towards the horizon, and then here you can see why I went to that point, okay? Right? And I just, I know how far back I need to go and how far back I need to, or how um, much I want to come towards me because I know where my station point is later. We'll get into that in the next tutorial, but I'm sort of setting this up for that. In any case, this just uh, is telling you how to make a grid uh, regardless of that, okay? So then if I want to, I can draw my walls, my wall lines in, my verticals, and they're just going to be at the intersections, right, of these lines. You can see that here, all right, same on the other side, a couple that I didn't draw in earlier, but you can see them here. All right now it's starting to look complex and probably a little confusing uh, like it did originally, but you can see how we got here, okay? I'm also going to do the same thing with these vanishing lines vertically, okay? That's just the horizon at two, at two meters above, above my floor or my ground. Okay, you can start to see this thing come together. Okay, now knowing where my space kind of ends in the distance, you know, I've got a kind of box that I've drawn back there that kind of tells me in space where that happens to be. Okay, so I can also then continue drawing these sort of vertical wall lines. These are all measured meters, okay? And then that will give me the ability to make intersections here, and I can make a grid of this entire space in that way, okay? And what this does is it lays out a framework for me to be able to draw a perspective um, based on dimensions that I care about and the view that I care about uh, for a building, a space, or an object uh, that I'm interested in. Okay, so going back to the clean drawing, you can see all the steps. Um, you can come back and look at this if you have to, just as a snapshot, and you can kind of see how everything relates. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know.